Doom 1 was a near universal success, with the game being installed on more computers than Windows 95 at the time. And with the first game ending on a cliffhanger with demons invading Earth and slaughtering the pet rabbit of our protagonist Jorg and Dorg- I'm- okay, I'm not doing that again. Id Software had to work their ass off if they wanted to meet the demand for a sequel. And oh boy did they! Good time. There's only four buttons on the Game Boy, how do I change weapon? You have to press L and R, and then look up or down. I don't like this. Ah! I don't like this part. I'm just kidding. It's Doom 2. Both Johns cracked their knuckles and the boys I did got to work. And how long did it take to make this sequel to one of the greatest selling PC games of all time? About 11 months. Doom 2 runs on the exact same engine that Doom 1 ran on, and reuses every enemy, every weapon, and uses both bosses from the original as normal recurring enemies, while adding just enough to the game to help it stand out. While Doom 1 had the Zombie Man, Shotgun Guy, Imp, Pinky, Spectre, Baron of Hell, Kaku Demon, Lost Soul, Spider Demon, and Cyber Demon, Doom 2 adds 8 more demons on top of the base 10. This nearly doubles the enemy count, which, let's put a pin in that for later, because I'll be coming back to that. Because of Doom 2's short development cycle, there's really not a lot to talk about before jumping into the game itself. But I can talk about some of the things that I forgot to talk about with the first game, namely this man, John Carmack. I brought him up in passing, but I really didn't give him enough credit. This man is an absolute fucking genius. When a game-breaking bug was discovered just before the first game's launch, John Carmack stepped in and fixed that shit within minutes. He compared software patents to robbery, releasing the source code for Doom and Wolfenstein so that other developers could improve on the foundation that they created. When the source code for Quake 1 leaked ahead of time, a fan used it to create a port of the game to Linux, and John Carmack helped the team create an officially produced Linux port of Quake. The dude ate a medium pepperoni pizza from Domino's almost every day at id Software for nearly 15 years, and brought a goddamn whiteboard to QuakeCon, and gave a lecture about the physics of light for an hour and a half, and everyone listened! And do you know why? Because he is John motherfucking Carmack. This man's my new hero. I also got one other thing wrong in my first Doom video. I didn't realize that the Ultimate Doom came out after Doom 2. I realized that after I published the video. Ultimate Doom came out in 1995, while Doom 2 released in 1994. Meaning Thy Flesh Consumed is more of a prequel that raises a few more questions. Since this episode was made to entice people to play Doom 2, why not include some of the Doom 2 monsters? Maybe at the end of the episode is a teaser. I don't know, but at the end of the episode it still tells us that our next step is Hell on Earth and damn it, that's where we're gonna be going next. Ooh, that's spooky. Once again, I am using the GZ Doom source port, and if you want to know more about that, then check out my video on the first Doom. Look at the corner for that little card thing. I don't know how that works. And I will be using another mod called Smooth Doom. It's a mod that simply adds more frames of animations to weapons and enemies. And that's it. It just makes the animations look nicer. The graphics in this game are on par with Doom 1, so I'd be saying the exact same thing. So why not make it look nice, you know? Also, Smooth Doom disables the little HUD here with Doom Guy's head. That's normally in Doom 2, but that might help you guys know if I'm talking about Doom 2 or Doom 1. If you don't see the HUD down there, I'm talking about Doom 2. The first notable change from Doom 1 is that there's no episode select. You just jump right in. Doom 1's episodic structure has been completely omitted in favor of a single, linear experience. As a as a result, short story exposition moments seemingly come out of nowhere. That neat map you had to give you an indicator of progress that the episode has been replaced with a static image of a nice skull smoothie. And as a result, the game can feel like it's going on forever if you don't know how many levels are in the game. It's 32, by the way. 30 if you don't count secrets. The opening level in Doom 2, functionally, is very similar to E1-M1 in the first game. Even down to the early weapon secret and enemy types. Though there are no episodes, so it's just called Map 01. The only big difference between this and E1-M1 is that if if you immediately walk left, you could get the chainsaw <laughs> just, just waiting there for you. And since there's no split episodes and no point in the game where you lose all of your weapons, you have the chainsaw for the entire rest of your adventure. Alright kids, that was fun. Did you enjoy the first level of Doom 2? Oh, you say it's too similar to Doom 1? Will y'all mind if I- <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Super Shotgun. Yes! Yes! This weapon of mass demon slaying is one of the biggest factors that separates Doom 1s from the Doom 2s. Can it completely slaughter a huge group of hit scanners in one click? Check. Can it one-shot demons that normally took two or three shotgun shots in the first game? 
check. Does it sound like Queen's We Will Rock You if you hold down mouse one? Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man! Oh, hey. He's new. I am heavy weapons guy. These are the heavy gunners. Heavy! The first of the new enemy types you'll be encountering in your adventure. Because of the super shotgun laying waste to demons that would normally give you a hard time in Doom 1, you gotta add some harder demons to compensate. That's just how balance works. If this was Doom 1, I'd be shitting myself right now. I'm already terrified of the shotgun hit scanner, so the heavy gunners just feel like a reasonable addition. They're still irritating as fuck though, even with the super shotgun. It just makes them more satisfying to blast though. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez, they're throwing barons at me this early in the game? Is exactly what I thought until I got a closer look. No, these shameless recolors are actually the Hell Knights, just easier versions of the Baron, effectively making them a beefier version of imps, I guess? And wow, these levels are neat too. They're fucking huge. Just look at the scale going on here. There weren't really levels like this in the first game, and as a result, you need 32 megabytes of RAM just to run Doom 2, as opposed to the first game's 8 megabytes of RAM. That's not a lot in today's world. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I guess that's not even even a lot compared to modern games. But at the time, that's still requiring four times as much RAM as the previous game, letting Doom 2 have bigger groups of demons, bigger maps, twice as many demon types, and a huge, huge jump in music quality. I can't exactly place it, I prefer the soundtrack of Doom 1 over Doom 2, but overall the quality of Doom 2's soundtrack is just way, way better. And at no point in the game do I feel like I'm listening to a mutilated MIDI version of a Metallica song, and that alone is an accomplishment. The music doesn't feel as heavy as the first games with music that could easily be mistaken with elevator music. But there's still a few tracks that really get my head bopping, with my personal favorite being Map 9's track, Into Sandy City. Though with music, I gotta bring up Andrew Holschult. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This dude did metal covers of the entire Doom 1 soundtrack and part of Doom 2's, breathing new life into songs that otherwise I've found kinda difficult to listen to in the original SC55 music font. The guy ended up doing the soundtrack to the Doom-inspired game Dusk, which I got as a gift, but I haven't really touched yet. And he was recently brought in by id themselves to do the soundtrack for Quake Champions. Say what you want about this game, I, I love it. You know who else makes some really dope Doom covers though? This guy, Miles Elker. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This dude's crazy talented and happens to make metal just the way I like it. Prong. This guy did that new metal cover of my theme you heard at the beginning. I'll include a link to his work in the pinned comment as usual. Oh, and speaking of demon types... Revenant! Revenant. Noun. A person who has returned, supposedly, from the dead. Uses? Punch. God damn it. I, I love these guys so much! They're so stupid! They're just a skeleton with a vest wearing pants! No, oh, wait, that's blood. A shoulder-mounted rocket launcher, and we'll just straight up sock you in the jaw! I, I love him so much. Finishing the stage that introduces us to the Revenant also gives us our first story dump. Yada yada, destroy the heart of the demon outpost starport demons- AH! CHUNKY CYBER DEMON! <laughs> so it looks like the demons have been merging their technology with ours, and Tiny over here looks like a more compact version of the cyber demon. This time sporting flamethrowers instead of instant rocket launchers, which is pretty cool. You don't take burn damage, so it's functionally the same, they just don't explode. You take a boss, squish him down, get a baby version of it. Well, as long as they didn't do the same thing to the mastermind- GOD DAMN IT! I'm baby. 
So that's most of the new demon types out of the way. We've got a couple more to talk about down the line, but for now I just want to talk about this level, Tricks and Traps. I really wasn't the biggest fan of this level. There's a ton of trial and error in its traps. There's this neat room full of caco demons and they all come out of the walls and that's really cool, but you don't need to be here or it's a trap. Oh. God damn it. But you do need to be here. Okay, that's really cool and all seeing the cyber demons getting overpowered by the barons of hell, but why is the cyber demon here? Just gonna make that giant terrifying boss from the first game a recurring enemy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least I got the super shotgun. This is not a drill. The barons have escaped captivity. I repeat, the barons have escaped. I wish that's where my problems with this level ended, but no, you gotta go use that yellow key you got from this room with a cyber demon, where you're flanked by a bunch of imps just to get the red key, but if you fall down the lava here, you are fucked. You have to die in order to respawn. Hope you didn't have invincibility. I should also bring up that during my run of Doom 2, I didn't save at all in the middle of a level. I did this a lot in Doom 1, and then I realized that this didn't help me get better at the game. The reason I got so good at games like Mega Man X is because that when I played the game growing up, if I died, I gotta go back to the beginning, you know? You didn't have save states on the original console. This is the same philosophy that I brought into recording Doom 2 that I didn't use in Doom 1. If I die at any point in this level, I'm gonna start it over. I wanna say that for the record, there's nothing wrong with doing this, you do you. However, this only made me falling into a trap just before the exit all the more frustrating. Doom 2 is very dickish with its trap. You found a secret, it says, as it puts me in a room with another cyber demon! <laughs> no! No, no, get away from me! No, no, don't pick him up! These are the Archviles, spawns of Satan himself. They could smack you with an absolutely devastating hitscan attack that takes a bit to charge up, which can either be perceived as a telegraph or a guarantee that you're about to be launched a couple hundred feet into the sky. After flicking the nose of Mr. Totally Rad Skeleton Man, you <laughs> stopped the demonic invasion of Earth and successfully evacuated everyone to Mars. What? Okay, I get it. That leaves nothing but demons on Earth for you to super shotgun. <laughs> But where are all the people gonna go? Mars is small and I don't think there's enough oxygen to keep people alive. Doom guy, I really hope you thought this through. But oh, ain't that convenient. The source of the demonic invasion is in your hometown! And this is my least favorite part of the game, the goddamn city levels. Sure, they're huge and probably need a beefy computer at the time to run something like this. Good on them. They made something giant, but fuck these levels. They are so goddamn tedious. These portals don't mean jack shit. There's a giant arrow on the floor that tells you where to go because I guess they didn't know how to make it obvious enough. All right, who left the portal to hell in the basement? Oh, I forgot about you. So these are the pain elementals. Remember the lost souls from the first game? Arguably the least annoying enemies in the game, uh, so I thought. It's as if the people at id went, hmm, how can we make them more annoying. Oh, I got it. Let's take these little meatballs and make them shoot out lost souls instead of fireballs. And when it dies, it spawns more of them. Luckily, sometimes they just die as soon as they spawn. It's apparent that Hell even hates them too, considering that they're just locked up in this one Hell level. They even put a BFG right next to them as if the people at it are going, okay, I know you hate these guys here. This one's on me. On this other obnoxious city level, I did find a secret that took me to a secret Wolfenstein level. Oh, that's pretty cool. This was really worth the hassle of the industrial zone. You ever wanted to know who would win in a fight between the mastermind and the cyber demon? There you go. No, God, no! Oh, hey, look at that. That's pretty. Before the final boss of the game, you do get this really cool stage. It's a large, wide open area that features nearly every enemy type in the game, minus the spider mastermind. You've got some revenants acting as a turret and a well built up to rematch with a cyber demon that doesn't feel shoehorned in. Hmm. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but something is setting off the red flags here. I can't tell if it's the megasphere, the mutilated bodies on the wall, or the wall of the infinite damned. Dude, sick heavy metal album cover, bro. No, I so this is the Icon of Sin. I think it's the closest the Doom universe has to Satan. It's just a head bolted to a wall and it spits out loot boxes out of its brain to spawn basically every non-boss demon you've encountered in the game. All you have to do is trek to the top of this area, flick the sunglasses skeleton man, ride the pillar all the way up to the top and pump rockets right into its exposed brain. Okay, saying that out loud, that's metal as fuck. The Icon of Sin shrivels up and thrashes its limbs for miles, so I'm guessing there's supposed to be more of it there and we're just seeing the head? Well, maybe I'll just no-clip inside and- John Romero! To win the game, you must kill me, John Romero. 
Unfortunately, the ending is just as short as the Icon of Sin, with a short text blurb saying that rebuilding the world will be more fun than destroying it. I don't know, maybe it's just a bit underwhelming, especially compared to the first game's ending. I love that ending so much, the music, the cliffhanger, it's just perfect. At least the credit sequence is pretty cool, getting a roll call for all of the demons seen in the adventure, uh, this was fun. I admit I enjoyed Doom 2 a lot more than I did when I first played it all those many years ago. Maybe I just needed a break. When I first played Doom 2, I jumped into it right after beating the first Doom, and as a result, I saw the game as nothing more than just an expansion. There are some expansions, like Final Doom and the Master Levels of Doom 2, but when I tried to run them, I'm... I don't know what's happening. It just does everything the first Doom did, and did it way, way better. But if you're gonna jump into this, I do suggest taking a break if you just beat Doom 1. Sadly enough, I feel like I should have more to talk about, but there's honestly not a lot that I could bring up here with Doom 2 without repeating some of what I said in the first video. As for the next time we visit the Doom series on the channel, I'm honestly not sure. I did pick up Doom 64 at Too Many Games, which is a direct sequel to Doom 2, but then I was also given the sequel that's not actually a sequel, but a reboot, Doom 3. I haven't played either of these outside of testing to see if 64 worked, so if you have a preference, let me know down in the comments. Or tweet at me, at the other Trav guy, and let me know which Doom you think is better. Also, let me know in the comments whether you prefer Doom 1 or Doom 2. I admit, now I'm more on the fence. Last time I thought I preferred Doom 1 more, but I don't know anymore. Oh, and an update for the folks that are wondering what's up with the X6 video. It's coming. I promise. It's gonna take a bit because I'm trying some new stuff with it, so if you'd like to follow me on my quest, be sure to check up on my Twitter or support me on the Patreon. And for the people that pledge $10, you could join the Plaid Dad tier, and I will read your name out loud. People like 1UP Commentaries, Chef Kilo, EMT Neutrino, Mark Travis, Slim Jim's Media Bin, The SideQuest Gamer, and Virginia H. But cool, thank you for watching this video. The next time we're gonna be looking at any type of id game will actually be with Quake 1. Or Quake 2, I might make it a double feature, I don't know. But let me know what you think we should jump back to first with the Doom series. But in the meantime, I'll see you guys later. Don't buy the Switch port.